Thank you. And like I said, you don't have to make a full decision today. Right. Okay, good afternoon everyone. Uh, with the posted time having arrived and a quorum of members present, I'll call the Finance Committee for Tuesday, April 9th, 2024 to order. The first item on our agenda is the minutes of our previous meeting from 326, copies of which were in the packets. Any adjustments to the minutes that anyone is looking for? If not, I'll take a motion to approve the minutes. Motion from Watson. Is there a second? Second by Lukens. Further discussion? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. The minutes are approved. Item number two is discussion and possible action on approving sole source request to purchase paint for pav pavement marking. Um, you'll see the request from DPW in your packets. It appears this product is the product that works best with the equipment they have to apply it with. Um, does anyone have questions on that paint at all? If not, is there a motion to approve that purchase? Motion by Martin, second by Watson. Further discussion? Members in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? None are opposed. That motion carries. Um, item number three is discussion and possible action on approving sole source request for 2024 Police Department squad car upfits. Um, you've got some information um, from the fleet shop in your packets about those upfits. Um, in the past, they had gone out and sought um, quotes and proposals on that. There's a limited number of vendors. Um, in looking at this this time, uh, I think that our fleet team also um, looked to see if there were either um, vendors with closer proximity to us or um, with alternate um, ability to be able to provide all of the things that the car needs to be road ready in one place. I don't, it sounds like they were not able to locate that, that the vendor that they've been using is the one that um, emerges as the one that can do the entire job. Um, without multiple vendors engaged and that their previous work has been um, satisfactory. I guess, does anyone have questions on that contract at all? Our fleet manager is here if you have questions. Mike, go ahead. I guess I got a question. I don't know if it's a question or a more of a clarification because trying to read the narrative here, was it that we had a local vendor but they don't wish to bid out anymore or is this the vendor that doesn't wish to bid, so we're going sole source with them. Well, the vendor that we had was this Belco, and so to be local like they are with some of their two-way maintenance, I believe they had approached Northway Communication who said that they were not um, able to do the job. Like I don't know if it was the size or, or the... Yeah, that's, Go ahead, Sal. That's correct. So uh, Northway was in my office when we were discussing doing this, and I asked them about the upfit, and they said that they no longer are doing full, complete upfits. They said that they also don't have the licensing to do that anymore. Okay. So they're only interested in the radio piece, but not all the other stuff? Right. Okay, oh. which is a problem. They, they said they'll also do a strobe here or there for repairs, but they're not interested in doing a full upfit. Not full lights, not the dog door, not all that stuff. No. That, okay. So we've been using this this vendor as, as an upfitter then and previously? Yes. And, we, and we're going to continue to do so then? That's the hope. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yes. Additional questions on upfit? If not, is there a motion to approve the contract? A motion from Martins. Is there a second? We have a second. Second by Watson. Further discussion? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That Thank motion you. carries. Thank you. Um, item number three, let's see, item number four is discussion and possible action regarding second amendment to agreement between the city of Wausau and the Wausau Cemetery Association regarding lease of a snow disposal site. Um, does anyone have any questions on this particular item? We've got some documentation in the packets about the um, property um, near the cemetery that they use for snow disposal during the winter. Michael. I'm going to, um, I guess that the, the thing that kind of stuck out to me was under the Second Amendment, the city would agree that when certain equipment in the Department of Public Works becomes surplus, WCA get, or the Cemetery Association gets an opportunity to attain it. What are they, what are they looking for? Is this like light trucks or? Right. A, a, <clears throat> and some mowing equipment. Uh, we met um, with. Eric Lindman was at the meeting, and they did find that there would be some equipment that would be available. Um, you know, again, as Tegan mentioned, 
Wisconsin statutes say if a cemetery becomes no longer financial, financially stable, that a community has to take over that. And our goal is to not run the cemetery. And so we were just yeah. brainstorming ways that we could help them financially without um, operating the cemetery. Okay. Yeah, like the equipment that we're talking about is small engine equipment, um, okay. you know, trimmers. Um, they did ask uh, one of their want lists to is pickups, you know, light duty fleet, things like that. So as if we do have our turning in vehicles and stuff like that, that would be one consideration. So stuff that like depreciates quickly. Yeah. Small, okay. Very, very much so, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Okay. And again, the reason we have... Um, created the payment as a payment for the snow dump site is that then becomes i guess eligible for transportation aids because it is for winter maintenance whereas if we just gave them a donation annually that would not be eligible for transportation aid so we are getting some benefit from this uh, payment okay additional questions if not is there a motion to approve the amendment Motion from Martins, is there a second? Second from Lukens, further discussion? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, opposed? None are opposed, that item carries. Um, item number five is discussion and possible action on renewing of parking lot lease at 3rd and McClellan um, for Curly Kale LLC. And we've got some um, documents in the packet on that one as well. Um, does anyone have any questions on um, that particular lease. If not, is there a motion to approve the renewal of the lease? Motion by Watson, is there a second? Motion by Mar or second by Martins. Further discussion? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That motion carries. Um, item number six is discussion and possible action regarding the new treasury clarification on the obligation of personnel costs for ARPA funding. So you've got a memo in your packets that Marianne had outlined about that. Um, I guess if you want to just walk us through that, Marianne, because that is relevant to the next few items. Yeah, I think there's a couple uh, really important changes that the treasury has made on their interpretations of obligation. So if you recall, historically, they were saying that you could not use ARPA beyond December 31st, 2024 for any personnel costs because there was no way to obligate those funds after 2024 because you weren't going to enter into a contract with an employee. Um, they released uh, some information on March 29th saying they have changed their stance on that and we can now obligate through 2026 for employees and as long as the position was funded by ARPA prior to December 31st of 2024. And in their frequently asked questions, there is um, the ability, for example, if someone would leave uh, employment with the city or get promoted to a different position, that that existing position we could find a new employee to fill that and still that would be ARPA eligible. Uh, the other thing that they have, I think the other really important one is clarifying how we can handle uh, costs between December 31st, 24 and December 31st, 26 if, for example, um, you had a contract and maybe it didn't cost as much as you thought it was going to and all of a sudden you experience a savings in that two year period. We now have the opportunity to spend it on other things, even though a contract was not in hand uh, prior to December 31st, 24. Or another big, I guess, concern that I had is, you know, we're having audits every year on these funds and they are considered high risk funds. So the auditors basically are looking at every single transaction. If during that period of 2024 and 2026, 
an auditor, either our auditor or a federal auditor would come in and say that's not an eligible cost, you would be able to replace that with something else, even though you didn't have a contract in place. So they're really giving people a lot of flexibility during that uh, two-year, I guess, lockout period uh, to replace that so that we're able to utilize all our funds. So I thought that was really good news for us, and that was you know, one of the big worries that we had was what was going to happen after 2024 if we did experience savings or a change in a contract or something like that. Because prior to that, they were like, the only way you would be able to do it is if a contractor went out of business, you could find a new contractor to replace that old contractor, but you couldn't make any other changes. They're also allowing for change orders to to actually increase the cost of the contract so if you entered into a contract you know let's say on in November of 24 and as the process started you ran into rock or some other unanticipated cost you would be able to increase the contract to reflect those new um, circumstances so a lot of flexibility I think that's helpful that allows yeah. I think before that it was very you know, creating some difficulty and some urgency for um, communities to find um, projects that they could complete right. to get that spend down done. So I think that anything that um, alleviates our concern about having to turn money back in at the end and allows us to get the most work done for the money that we were given is huge. Yes. Sarah. So does that mean that some of those projects that are sort of red identified in our spreadsheet that aren't as much of a concern because those like those housing projects don't have to have contracts fully. They still by need a end. contract by December 31st of 24, um, but they would, if there were changes to the contract, there would be more flexibility than we had before. And so then surpluses from contracts that maybe came in under, could we use those on other projects yes. that we hadn't even allocated yes. by the end of 2024? Yes. So like those housing projects, if there was surplus, we could throw some of that to it. Right. Okay, and then I guess my other question too, I noticed in the community outreach specialist position that we were sort of ramping it down early, you know, like having more of it associated with the levy. So is that something we can go back and like fund more of it out of ARPA instead of the levy? Yes, okay. you could. And I think that was uh, something that I was very happy about because if you recall, you know, we have the 12 firefighters, three which are being funded by ARPA, nine that are being funded by the safer grant along with oh no three by ARPA nine by safer um, and the outreach coordinator position uh, and we have that TIF that is expiring but we've added the one year so this is going to be able to allow us if you choose to allocate ARPA for those personnel costs in 25 and get us past that TID one year extension when the TID funds would be available for other budget expenses. So I think, you know, from a timing perspective, it's very helpful for us uh, to be able to yeah, not it, move that to the tax levy. Um, right, because if we time that movement to the levy in time for or in, in concert with the TID closure where we regain that increment and that revenue into the general fund, that then should allow us to absorb the majority of those costs and not have to worry about um, either retention of those items or those people or um, ramping up the levy to sustain those salaries. So Correct. that's huge yeah. for us. So um, anybody else have questions on that new treasury directive? And they are having a um, presentation or a WebEx in very first week of May. Mm -hmm. So we'll learn more, I'm sure, during that time too. Sure. Okay, go ahead, Doug. So th this this is a new revelation that we didn't Very new. have. Okay, yes. so when we when we agreed to put these on the ARPA funding for two years, uh, we anticipated we would have to fund these elsewhere. So now we now we're getting a get out of jail free card here. It really, kind of seems opposed to what the ARPA was for in the first place. We weren't. It wasn't to sustain long term personnel payments I and mean, I, I understand this gets us legally out of it but it philosophically we've still got to pay for these people at some point yep. and uh, it just seems an incredible amount to be putting on the ARPA when we have a list that we're not going to extinguish 
with the money, the funds we do have left. Mm -hmm. Okay. Additional comments? Because that directive will really, I think, impact some of our decision making on the items that we have down the list. You know, we went back between meetings, um, we rescored all of the ARPA things um, that we had um, in the hopper, including the ones that we had put a pin in from before. Um, that we then received a bunch of additional requests um, from the airport. We looked at deferred capital. So the rest of our agenda is essentially um, those items um, that we have rescored. And so in your packets, the tabulated scoring is now attached to the packet. Um, you can see how each of those items ranked. Um, the top two um, being community care paramedic and the two additional officers, community outreach, and then asphalt paving, um, because we know that um, street and road issues um, have been paramount concern to the community. So, um, you know, we'll move through our next couple of agenda items, um, but then also refer back to this list, the score sheet that came out. Um, our next item is number eight, um, which is, oh wait, our item is number seven is next. Seven is discussion and possible action regarding ARPA funding requests and related budget modification for the addition of two officers to the Wasa Police authorized staffing level. They had requested ARPA dollars to finish the rest of 2024 and had a grant for all of 2025. So their request was for 117,960. Um, that scored 73.75. Um, which is second from the top of the scale for the things that we all have ranked. Um, I guess, committee members, how are you feeling about that proposal? We had accepted a volume of public comment about it at our last meeting with the request. Um, HR committee also accepted a volume of it last night. Sarah. Um, I guess I, I appreciate like the overall average rankings, but um, I do like in the past how the the broken down rankings are because I did actually find a typo in one of the other ones that might have inflated the LED lighting upgrade. Oh. Um, there was like uh, Mike apparently ranked something 74, but I think it was either a seven or a four. So it was, his number was skewed a bit. Um, but like it would show that um, the additional officers, I mean, the range, the range of scores was from 28 to 91. So an average of 73 is, is pretty interesting. I guess mm -hmm. the the range um, there. So um, I don't know. I guess my my big um, sticking point for this is using ARPA funds for this particular expense. Um, I would love to see it funded a different way if it needs to be funded. But well, and I think that was a question that we had started down that path with our last um, meeting. And you know, I think one of the things that question we always have for Marianne is: Is there an alternative fund source to finish twenty twenty four? Um, either through surplus or vacancy, that we could then devote ARPA to something else. Mm -hmm. And it, this year is a difficult year with the new ERP implementation. I, you know, we are behind where we would typically be at this time of the year. Um, you know, you certainly have the opportunity to apply fund balance at any time, regardless if you've created a surplus or not. We do have a healthy fund balance. It is, you know, going to be wholly funded in future years mm -hmm. um, or at least during the, the pilot period. Um, so I guess at this point I can't tell you that you have sufficient surplus to fund it. Uh, you could do a combination also of the you know partial ARPA, partial fund balance. Sure. I mean assuming that you would apply fund balance to it um, and then reconciling where we have come out with the right. um, lack of winter um, in 2023. Right. You know, is it your expectation that we would be able to sufficiently um, replace that fund balance with winter surplus or some I other think so, form? Yes. Okay. So, and then you devote this ARPA to other things? Yeah. Committee members, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, if you had an alternate sur fund source other than ARPA, if you would apply fund balance, um, Contingent upon the identification of surplus from 2023. I'd be okay with that. It's that that frees up ARPA for some of these other things. That, it, it does because the list is long. Yeah, very long. And then that's less that we would have to look at come CIP time. Right. And obviously, Marianne could conduct that review. Right. And um, then you would have to modify the resolution on the floor tonight. Sure. Yep. Okay. Um, do we have a motion then to accept this item um, funded with fund balance instead of ARPA contingent upon the um, identification of 
um, fund balance or surplus from the year 2023. And we would make the same amendment to the council resolution that's on for tonight. I'll make that motion. motion from Martins. Is there a second? Second by Lukens. Further discussion? Go ahead, Sarah. So I did I did mention last night at um, HR, I mean, it just in a couple ideas, and I, I, th I think I had a discussion with Chief Barnes, too. Like, my, my one suggestion is we could sort of compromise, you know, have a community, like, throw some money at the commu another community support specialist and then have a, a patrol officer, an additional patrol officer. And from my understanding, it was it's very hard to, like, split that due to, you know, sort of needing a team, right, Chief mm -hmm. Barnes? Um, but I still would like to, I know we're, we're talking about, like, extending the community outreach specialist, but I'd still like to, to look at, you know, maybe home, housing that, that position underneath maybe a different department within our government um, and expanding it so that we can get, act, you know, like, try to tackle the homelessness issue a little bit more. And I know mm -hmm. that might be off agenda item, but... Um, I guess maybe my, my compromise wasn't as feasible, um, but I feel a lot better that it's not being used, but I mean, funded through ARPA. So. Right. Well, and one of the items that we ranked also was ARPA for the outreach specialist in general through 25 and 26. So um, go ahead, Chief. Yeah, I, um, we had a pretty robust discussion, and um, I think compromise is, is a great way to go. In this particular case, our, our funding in 2025 is for two officers. It doesn't give us flexibility. But the reason it's two officers is because of the situations our officers find themselves in. I or any other chief would be negligent to send officers in as a one-person group as opposed to two officers. Every time we're responding to those situations, we're sending anywhere between two and six officers. Mm -hmm. So from an officer safety standpoint, um, I'm pretty firm on it has to be a team of two, but um, it. I'm fully supportive of looking at what is the best way to deliver services because these are not the only services that this community needs to positively impact this. So um, I'll just to reiterate because I have the mic, like I would love to see this council um, hold as many cows as necessary to establish a strategy to identify what the gaps are and what the role and responsibility of the city is. And as we, as we learn more about what we're doing and what our priorities are, um, then we find out where is the best home for those, for those employees or those programs within our city. And I'm very flexible and very open. Mm -hmm. We want progress, and um, you know, we're if we continue to do the same thing we're doing right now, we should expect the same results. So I'm very open to change. Right. Okay. So, Carol. Thank you. Um, I've talked to a lot of people, um, questioned a lot of people, um, went down and spent some time uh, looking at the videos, and um, I too would would definitely um, love to have a, uh, community outreach positions with this, but um, just as we've talked in the past about, uh, you know, we, we don't have social workers in the city. That's a county thing. So um, I would welcome cows. I would welcome more of that, more of a discussion. But anyway, so as far as this goes, I would definitely also, if we can come up, um, if we have money surplus, mm -hmm. um, you definitely use that instead of ARPA funds as okay. well. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Doug. Okay, so we're, we're, we are voting here to not use ARPA funds for this request, and we have verified funds available well, or, we, or we have Yes, to. we so have how, how a, do we move it forward if we don't? a generous reserve, so you, we would use reserve. Now, that doesn't mean that that reserve is going to be generated from 2023 savings or if it's in 2024 or if it's reserves that have accumulated over time. So, you know, it's not ideal that we were, that this is one-time funding for uh, ongoing costs, but I think the difference is it's a two-year pilot and you're stepping into these additional positions knowing that after that two years you were going to have to fund it some way anyhow, right? Because it's not going to be funded 
most likely from the foundation forever. Well, the and director not, from Public Health and Safety was that they would take stock of their effectiveness, right. and if they found that they were either successful enough to stop or it was ineffective, that they would then get back to 79 staff right. through attrition. Right. Right? So. Yes. So we know that this has a, a finite end. If, right. if we find that it's run its course and worked well enough or that it's not gotten the results that we wanted, um, and then this would allow him to accept the grant for the 25 right. funding as well. So there's no outlay of city costs in 25? Yes, we do. Okay, so we have no, no outlay costs for 25, right? Right, that's my understanding that right. the foundation was going to fund 100% in 25 of the two positions. Correct. That's correct, and I don't want to speak for what the foundation will do in the future, but um, in my communications with them it was, they're, they find themselves in the exact same situation that um, public health and safety did, which is um, prove effectiveness and let's talk about what the future mm -hmm. looks like mm -hmm. as far as a funding partner. So um, they're by no means committed, but um, I believe there is a door open. Mm -hmm. um, this, this issue matters to the Judd S. Alexander Foundation as much as it does to the rest of us, and they want to be part of the solution. Um, I think there can be additional conversations with them if we identify needs as well. Well, and I think it helps to pilot these things to gauge their effectiveness. This and the paramedic item both are, are really pilot pilot, pilot mm -hmm. concepts. So this then really would, with the motion and second we have on the floor, it would apply 117960 from fund balance um, versus ARPA, and then we would divert the ARPA to other items on the list. Additional comments or questions on that? If not, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed, that motion carries. Uh, let's flip over to um, item number eight, which is discussion and possible action on the community care paramedic position for the fire department and approving ARPA and a budget modification for that. Um, their request was for 96,750. Um, they had a variety of um, uh, private sector sponsor funding available to assist with this also is a pilot program. Um, now we were thinking in our last session that we may be able to um, do a change of purpose on some of the ARPA that we had previously approved for the fire department. Are we still of that mind? I thinking that even if we wanted to um, add ARPA for the three additional firefighters, we'd still have enough in the allocation we gave them to start with? Yes, and that's how the resolution uh, is worded. Is worded. So yes. this isn't new ARPA, this is diverting some of the ARPA that we previously awarded to fire. Right to try this program. Because they've had a difficult time filling those positions, right? the okay. three positions. Well, and I think to keep up with retirements and then mm. get that many new ones right. at the same time right. has been a challenge. Um, comments from the committee at all on that program? If not, is there a motion then to um, approve that program and move those funds from their previously awarded ARPA to this community care paramedic program? Oh, Sarah, go ahead. Or is that a motion? Sorry. The motion, but I also wanted to just indicate that this seemed to have a more favorable overall look from the committee from a range of 65 to 90. So it did. we all did to seem to have a good, mm -hmm. it was good comparable the top, feel on it. Top item. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so we have a motion from Watson. Is there a second? Second from Lukens. Further discussion? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That item carries as well. Um, item number nine is discussion and possible action regarding ARPA funding requests and related budget modification for police department parking lot perimeter fence. Um, we had talked about this item as well. The uh, numbers that we used were the more expensive option um, that seemed to be the material that had the um, best quality and the longest projected longevity um, is where we got to the $210,000 figure. Um, that in our overall ranking scored 53.75, which is right in the middle. Um, what are your thoughts on that item, committee? I had, this that item I think had previously been presented for CIP and was unfunded on CIP this year. Michael, yeah, um, this this particular item, you know, I was gonna um, reserve my, my my judgment and ranking until we had a discussion at our, our neighborhood community group, and we had such a thing happen this um, this last week, and um, excellent presentation by the. Um, the, the police chief and Lieutenant Sarah that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, uh, is is um, taking charge of this, but um, we the neighborhood does see the um, 
um, a positive benefit to this, mm -hmm. um, and um, especially the neighbor and 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 uh, the neighbors that live, you know, literally across the street from the police department on Seymour Street, did feel that it was um, the design of the um, uh, the more decorative uh, fencing, not the chain link, but the um, uh, the. The, the either steel or aluminum uh, mm -hmm. or ornamental fencing would be much more palatable than uh, than the more in the more inexpensive options. So um, I would go for the um, that the full amount to have the to to, to go with the, uh, the the decorative fencing on, okay. this, on this item. Is that a motion to approve the item then with ARPA? Yes, it is. Okay, so we have a motion from Martins. Is there a second? Second by Lukens. Further discussion? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, we'll record two opposed and three in favor. Um, so then that brings us to item number 10, which is discussion and possible action on ARPA funding requests and related budget modification for deferred capital projects. So in our list, um, you have the rest of the list, which kind of looks like CIP ranking, you know, where you ordinarily draw the line where you run out of money and then figure out what you have to move above and below the line to get your, the necessary work done. Um, now, assuming that we are using fund balance for the police officers, um, where, do we, where do we end up on this list, Marianne, with the um, ARPA funding that's available? I mean, if we were to fund asphalt paving at the full request, that takes most of it, right? I mean, we were yeah. just under $2 million. Um, when we had the engineers in, though, and we were talking about these projects, they also indicated that whatever level we funded it at, they would be able to work within. You know, so we have the option to, um, you know, and steadily in our budget workshops, we've been ramping up our asphalt overlay budget on an annual basis to get them a little further ahead every year um, in the context of their normal budget also. But... It, if we were to fund that asphalt paving project at say 500,000 which would get them half of the map they had there um, where would that put us then with the projects Marianne so you would be able to fund in making the correction that you had pointed out on the LED um, so that drops it down to like 51.25 um, points so you would be the community outreach specialist for 25 and 26, mm -hmm. asphalt paving for 500,000, three firefighters for 25 and 26, the police roof replacement for 150, council upgrades for 140, tennis court replacement for 135, and playground equipment replacement for 150. Okay, and that, and that includes the fence that we already used. Oh, I forgot about we, that. We moved the so fence up in our last vote. That. So then, no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to do the playground equipment then. Okay, so we'd stop at the tennis court? Yes. Is that where we would? Yes. Okay. And so, you know, let's, saying that, assuming that we would be able to um, get half of those streets done with that asphalt paving at half, and then if we were to draw a line at tennis court replacement, um, knowing that we've brought the police fence up already, that would leave playground equipment, which that was the last playground that needed done, and they had indicated when we asked them in our ranking workshop if that would last a while yet because it was actually in decent shape. It's just the last one that's not been upgraded to their, you know, new new style of equipment. Um, that then also would leave the um, Sylvan Hall, the Riverside Park parking lot, the Sylvan Hill parking lot, the Jefferson ramp upgrades, the DPW fence and gate, the street division office, all of the airport items and the police desks and that those all of those items can come back to CIP over the summer they're all CIP eligible so how would you guys feel about a list like that where you'd get a good portion of that list knocked out Carol and then Sarah I'm sorry when I just voted I was I was looking at the wrong amount for the for the gate so I know I already voted on it uh, for the fence I was thinking of the DPW. <clears throat> I was looking at the list. When <laughs> so anyway, um, you know, I know some of these other things. I'm 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 fine with having a fence um, at the police department, but I guess I would have not gotten that mixed up because that's you know compared to some of the other things that have been 
um, <clears throat> you know, needing repair for a long time, the parking lots, the playground equipment, I guess I would have preferred a, a cheaper fence and, um, you know, some more of the money to go to getting something else done. So I don't know. Um, that doesn't really, that's not a clear answer, <laughs> but I guess I just yeah. wanted to say, I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong amount. I was getting the two amounts mixed up, and that's quite a bit of difference, yeah. to 10 and 30,000, so I okay. apologize. So, and that item, that item actually passed on a mixed recommendation. So, um, you know, you have the option, you have the option to go back and revote that other item if you want. I mean, or we could look at alternative fund sources for it as well. You know, we do have, um, uh, pro we may have project savings from other projects. Right, you know, you and could. the more investment income, too. Right. I didn't go and look at that update for, you know, this last month, um, but we are getting, you know, a healthy interest income payment each month out of the reserves that we have for ARPA. Right. So that's, you know, that's something that, you know, you go ahead, Sarah. So with the, the interest income, does that get, that wouldn't get added back in for us to dole out to projects, right? It, does it go back into our general fund? So right now it's sitting in the ARPA fund, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's not regulated by the grant rules. Okay. So, and you did spend some of that on the Catholic Charities, okay. 232000 but then you saved that 232000 out of the regular ARPA. Okay. But I think when I looked last, uh, we were almost up to four hundred thousand dollars of investment income. So we could potentially. So you could fund the fence out of yeah. that, even. Yeah. Okay. So um, before we get too far down the road, because these things are all interrelated, um, you know, it may make sense then to jump back to our previous item and modify the fund source on the fence so that we're clear on that when we get to council with it mm -hmm. before we act on any more of this list because that's being acted on tonight i believe so the fence. no the f there's no resolution for the fence for the fence tonight, tonight. Yeah. okay so mm -hmm. that would go forward for next time but um let's just put a pause in um drawing the line on this list um we'll hop back to our previous item where we approved it but we did not delineate an alternative fund source so um on that item for the police fence we had a motion and a second to fund the project um, is it amenable to um, amend that motion and second to fund that with um, investment income and not true ARPA? I that, think I made the motion. You did, yes. So I would be amenable to using an alternative fund source as okay. long as we get that, like I said, the decorative fencing. Um, just to clarify that if we were to go with the more inexpensive chain link, the city would, would have to apply for a zoning variance. Right, because it was that. against the code standard. Because it, because it would be against code. Correct. Doug? Well, we've always operated under the principle that if we do have alternative funding that we would free up the ARPA to bring it back. So I, I don't see a need to do anything at this point. No, but if I think we, we should clarify funding. the record with our vote result um, so that when we get forward to council with it that it's been clarified that that is paid for with um, investment income from the ARPA dollars and not the actual ARPA dollars. I think we need clarification on that because we did clarify that with the other items where we've used alternative fund sources. We wouldn't need to re-vote it, but we do need to correct the record in connection with the vote. So. Well, I'm still confused, but I, it, that's, if that's what you want to do, I, I don't see, I don't see it necessary that we ex expend every last nickel here tonight right. either. That's true. That's true. That is true. Um, so that's okay. So we'll just make sure that the minutes of this meeting and that the resolution for the fence reflects investment income and not ARPA. We'll do. So we won't need to revote it or anything. Sarah. So um, with the community outreach specialist, um, it says 230,000, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's for the ARPA funding portion from 2024 and then continuing it from 25 to 26. Yes. Right? So it would be a flat allocation each year and not then, diminishing um because the 70,000 for this year is already out of levy we actually did not fund the outreach out of levy we funded it all out of ARPA because we I guess 
uh, when we ha were working on the 24 budget, I had missed that Ben Bliv and the old chief had proposed that it be a diminishing allocation. And so we did a budget amendment. Hold on, because I have it in the fire resolution. We did a budget amendment. Right, we allocated some of the fire department, right, our the budget, fire department. to supplement yes, that difference. It was like right near the first of the year this year. Uh, January 24th, January 23rd of 24, um, council allocated 115,000 of the fire department's ARPA allocation to that outreach con uh, coordinator position, the full amount. So then we would only need 200,000 for that to continue it to 25 and 26? Yes, because it's about, I think the, the initial budget was like 115,000 oh, for the was? full position. Okay. That's my recollection. Yes. I was looking at the the doohickey and it just says 100. Oh. The rank list says 230 for two yeah. years. Right. Yes. So so we'll go with the rank list number. Yep. Yeah, let's use yep, use that number. Okay. Um so now we're back on track with our list of things yes. that we wish to fund. Um do we want to um, move those projects forward one by one? Or do we want to hold back? I mean, by the end of the summer, we're going to have to figure out where the rest of the ARPA needs to go, kind of. So, you know, do you want to consider them item by item? I mean, we've done the community care paramedic, the police officers, and the uh, fence. So we could do that, consider them one by one down the list. I mean, we know that we um, run out of money after the tennis court. So we would stop asking at that point. So. I I might have a, just a suggestion. I, I'd, I'd like to see us postpone some of these. What, last night we had a possible meeting that would have essentially disbanded parks and, and rec. What, what would we have done with these two items had that been the case? Well, the park department would administer those funds and conduct the projects whether we have a committee or not. So just like we do with the park department CIP, they get funded, the funds, then they manage the project. Jamie, if you want to come up and... Um, so, and that was not the discussion last night that was supposed to be on last night, but it wouldn't change anything that we do today. Any type of CIP project already comes to the city to be funded and is ranked like every other CIP project that would never change, no matter how our committee structure is set up. So nothing would change in that regard. So you could have still achieved the tennis court project if it was funded. You could, yeah. you could that's complete that. That's how we that. do CIP projects today. Right. And that's how it would continue. And as long as I'm up here, just as long as looking at the list, um, I had this conversation with Marianne. Yeah. I think Andy brought it up at the last meeting. For the playground replacement, mm -hmm. using ARPA would make it very difficult with the rules of ARPA because of how we've typically designed our playgrounds because we have a set amount of funding. We can then work with different playground companies to design it up to that amount rather than going for a bid because playgrounds aren't apples to apples of any company. Mm -hmm. So if we're just talking ARPA here, I guess I would recommend that the playground be taken out okay. and I'll bring it back as a CIP request mm -hmm. and then if possible move up you know one of the parking lots or something yeah and I think it's really a, about the cooperative purchasing so I did reach out to our auditors um, they had responded they didn't have any experience of any of their other customers using cooperative purchasing with their ARPA money but that doesn't mean it's a absolute no and some, there was some, um, like a memo that came out from a cooperative purchasing organization that said it did comply with ARPA funds. Um, but I think, you know, we should just complete our uh, investigation on whether we believe that it meets the ARPA requirements. So we're in the process of doing that now. Okay. But we haven't completed that work. Okay. So do you guys want to take these item by item? Carol. Just one more question. I know this isn't <clears throat> on the list, but um, in the summary of all the, you know, what has been spent, what, what hasn't, what's behind schedule, um, the money to Catholic Charities and Open Door, are we able to get, like, any kind of itemized list of what has been spent, what it's been spent for so far? Sure. We, if, can, we can provide that to you. Could you? Um, because, you know, we... That was a, a really healthy um, amount of money, which I'm, I mean, I'm all for spending the money for that. Um, but I guess just because of all the changes, like it would be, 
Mm -hmm. I, I would appreciate being able to find out, you know, what the costs have been for. Okay. And so thank you. Well, and I think I agree. I think that with the um, pause that we had on the day center, obviously money wasn't being expended. And our goal was to stand that up for two years, knowing we had a gap in those services. The money we allocated may actually be able to go slightly longer than that. Um, you know, but those agencies also, I think, are fully aware that they need to be um, fundraising and getting sustainable. Um, in the absence of that funding when it runs out, because we certainly don't need all that to become levy dependent. I just, there's just no way um, that we could fund all of that from levy. Um, Sarah. So I think I, I would like to go through them one by one, but I also just had a, a quick question about like, if we continue, we're continuing to invest the ARPA funds and that continues to earn interest, like what happens, so that interest after 2024, we can use however. Right. Sweet. That's that's a good okay. So community care paramedic and the police officers, those top two we've taken care of. Um, so the can, next item, I, if we go, go ahead. I just I, I'm going to object a little bit here. We you know we just heard some, we have some some other we've we're taken playgrounds off of ARPA. Uh, you know I, we Alder Watson mentioned that she'd like to see the detailed roll up. I mean I, for example I I'd, I'd like to see the detailed roll up. In my opinion, the airport terminal building rehab could potentially be argued to be higher there. That's the gateway to the city there. It's not a very big amount, but I mean, I, I, I see some other funds that we're talking about could be available. I and mean, we've got some bigger context here that we could, could look at. And if we take them one by one tonight, you know, I think we're, we're too well, narrow focus. And the goal taking them one by one is certainly not to fund them all. It's to figure out what we're going to leave on the list with a pin in it going forward and what we want to move forward at this point. Um, you know, I, I will say I was shocked to see all the airport items come forward at the last minute. I, um, airport has um, healthy fund sources, um, both from state and federal. Um, there's matching funds. Uh, they have a CIP plan every year. They have a capital plan that they run for five years. I mean, I chair the airport committee. And I was shocked to see. I, my first reaction was, how did you know all of this in addition to your normal CIP end up on ARPA? When we were looking at ARPA projects, I feel like we were looking at, we wanted projects public facing that really get the most, like public benefit that the public can like experience. And, you know, I I don't feel like T hangers at the municipal airport are as an example are it. The people that benefit from T hangers at the airport are the T hanger tenants. It's not it's not everyone. And so I guess I had a hard time with those items, um, you know, and, and maybe that's why the scores are low, because I think my scores on them were low. But, you know, I also think that um, some of these projects, if we are coming up on a project in bid season um, this spring, if, they, if stuff needs to go out for bid, um, we should to kind of take, especially that asphalt project, the street and road stuff, we should take a look at. So, I mean, just to recap, we funded the community care paramedic. We funded the two additional police. Um, community outreach specialist, we need to take a look at that um, probably. Some of this other stuff can be left sit. It's not a problem, but um, how do you guys feel on moving forward on the outreach specialist? We already have her and we know what the work is, is accomplishing. So go ahead, Carol, is that a motion to move that one forward with funding? Do we have a second on that? Second from Watson. Further discussion on community outreach? Members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Let's record one no. Um, now, on to the asphalt paving project. That project, they gave us a map of streets that do not have lead service lines where a mill and overlay would buy a significant amount of time on the infrastructure backlog that we're experiencing. The streets that they picked are more than 10 years from rebuild, but they're in horrific condition. Um, you know, I guess if we were going to look at, let's say we funded, I mean, you can fund half of it, you can fund you can fund less than half of it. It's just a matter of it. It costs an awful lot to get a block or two. So, you know, I guess if we could maybe bring up the city engineer and see with half of that funding, Alan, how much of that work do you feel that you could accomplish? I know he's going to say half of it, but I mean, <laughs> it's it's going to depend on you know that map you have with the streets. Right. There's some four lane streets on there, like going around the hospital, those are more. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it depends which streets you want to cut. I mean, I tried to put the streets around the city too to east, west, north, south. So there's a, you know, the whole community would see a benefit for, for different neighborhoods, so. Sure. Would it be reasonable if we would fund this at whatever amount that we would take the street list or the map to 
formerly CISM, now infrastructure and facilities, and let them pick the streets? Since they pick the other streets for CIP or for capital? Typically, or the asphalt overlay does not go to, I mean, the, the funding does, the funding mm -hmm. source, but engineering typically picks the streets. But I, I mean, we can take it to right. if, if SISM or well, infrastructure Well, my, thought, my thought was that that committee would pick from the list that you've developed mm -hmm. because they have to stay within the confines of the non lead service issue. You know, if you've picked streets that you know don't have lead underneath mm -hmm. that wouldn't be disrupted by that project, you know, if you have eight or 10 on the list, maybe if they would prioritize that list to get, you know, I'm just thinking with that street around the hospital, just knowing how we talk about things in SISM or in what the new committee is now, um, right. often we try to get more for our dollar. So, I mean, it's just putting my hat on from that committee. It feels like if they were going to defer something, they would defer the four lane and get more of the rest of it, like in actual neighborhoods where people could experience the benefit. Sarah. And I, I would like that, but I'd also like to see if it would be possible to have it like represented across the, the city. So if you could pick them, like you already have, you know, highlights of north, south, east, west. Yeah, he's got them in a lot of different areas, yeah. which was helpful. Just a spat. Rather than normally we have them all in a cluster so that you can get in and get out. But I think spreading out that impact is right. appreciated in neighborhoods. The year we did that with capital, people seem to appreciate it. I think the sooner we can get it out, not that there's an urgency, but if we can get it out soon, we say, you know, the construction season is only so long in in uh, Wisconsin, obviously, and I'll ad I'll advocate for more money. Engineering can put contracts together pretty quick, and we can spend. So if you have extra savings on these other projects, we'll we'll take it later so in the like year too. So that was what I was thinking: is if we would fund it half, and then see how the rest of the season goes. You know, if we come up with additional funding, we certainly could look at more of that list that he had. Carol, and then Doug. Thanks. Yeah, I I would like to get as much done as we can with whatever um, money that the um, the committee agrees upon. Because I, you know, two years ago when we all met for the retreat, that was one of the big things. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> one of the top of the list were, were roads, and I, you know, I hear from people. Um, and I'm sure the rest of you do, even about their cars and things mm -hmm. like that. So I think Every day. When, I try, when I filled out, when I rated these, I really tried to look at, you know, what is going to help the most amount of people. Um, so I, too, would like to I like them to be spread out that way as much as possible. But, um, yeah, I'd like to get as much possible out of this. Thank you. Bring up Public Works Director. Hello. Hi. Uh, thank you. I I would also like to add that um, over the last three to four years, we've been adding uh, paving um, operations to uh, DPW and doing more and more of that every year. One of the things with these ARPA dollars that we'd really like to take a look at is ordering a new roller for the paver so we could do um, larger projects. And then possibly even using some of this additional money for our own hot mix and have our crews out on the streets in these neighborhoods doing some of this work as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that we could do it for less expensive than contracting it out and make those dollars, um, you know, go Stretch a little a bit little further. More. Right. Yeah. And so that would be one thing that I just want the committee to know that we'd be looking at is uh, some equipment purchases for this. Sure. So that as we move forward, uh, we'll be able to do more of this in-house for better costs. I think that would be helpful. I mean, that does eliminate the profit margin from the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, and I guess with regard to that, um, given the fact that they've got a construction season that's well, a little longer this year with early spring than it normally is, but the fact that they would have to get those projects um, worked into the schedule, do you guys want to move some of that asphalt paving forward now? Go ahead, Michael. I, I'm okay with um, splitting this asphalt paving in half and doing half now and then um, evaluating and um, adding more money to it as we move through the season since that's something you can kind of mm -hmm. kind of um, go on on the fly <clears throat> excuse me especially if, if, if we're considering doing some of our own own work yeah um, it's because it, it's a big it, it's it's a big million dollars is a big ask and I'd like to see some of these other projects tackled too mm -hmm. that um, would just kind of sort of sit there, you know, in CIP for several years, especially the council upgrades, because that's something. That, you know, we, we mm -hmm. talk about um, public facing and transformational. You know, this is something that's something that would help increase our transparency mm -hmm. to have. You know, so um, 
not, so, not to toot that horn, but um, I, 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 I'm good with going half and half. Okay, so is that a motion then to move forward 500,000 500, for that for street project? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is I there know. a second? Second by Watson. Further discussion? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed, that motion carries. Um, now the three firefighter positions, I actually agree with um, Alder Dinney on this. I think at some point we will have to absorb those into our budgets. Um, we were of the mind that we would have to start to step into that slowly and phase those in. Um, I guess I wouldn't mind us using a smaller amount of ARPA to kind of dilute the effect on the budget for a, lo for a longer period of time than what we thought we had, but I don't know that I'd want to fully fund them that way. I, I think that that's something that going forward the committee should discuss maybe in future months. I don't, that, I don't think that's a decision we have to make today. That's two years from now. So, but I do think that we should, I mean, if we need some ARPA funding to ease into the budget cycle to get those positions in, but the fact that they've had difficulty hiring all 12 in the first place, and the fact that we know that we have a, a TID closure pending with a finite date. So, you know, I guess I would like to see less ARPA in those because it's an awful lot of money. It's an awful lot of ARPA funding. I guess, do you guys want to leave that one sit for a bit? And then kind of keep on, go ahead, Michael. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm okay with leaving that sit because it is, yeah, it is a large amount of money. And um, if, we, if we keep funding these positions at the full amount, we're gonna be at a world of hurt in two years. Um, for sure. Come budget time. So maybe one, it, since we're, we're, we're on the cusp of budgeting, budget season already, um, see mm -hmm. what it's gonna take next year to mm -hmm ease those in and we can kind of make that sort of determination right. as part of the budget process. Right, they could always use that as a blending tool, but not necessarily solely funding it that way. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, the other next item was the LED lighting upgrade at DPW. Yeah, and Sarah had pointed out there was a typo. It, that actually in, moves down, Yes. right? So we'll move that down, we'll skip that item. Um, the police roof replacement, that showed up first on CIP last year. Um, it's a multi-phased project because it's multi-sections on the roof. So, you know, did they want it? Yes, but I don't know that it's that condition critical. I mean, we, it, when we deferred that in CIP, it seemed to sound like at that time it was not the end of the world to wait, I guess. Do we know where we're at with that facility right now? I mean, as far as longevity? I mean, that, I don't feel like that's a decision that is urgently to be made this evening. It just isn't. Because we've known about that project since last July. Correct. I think, um, yeah, with the with the police building, um, the roofs are at their end of life. Um, as we do have issues with them, we patch them, um, and and typically it's around the stacks and the ballasting and things like that where that membrane starts to stretch and mm -hmm. and we start to have cracking and breaking. Um, Nothing catastrophic at this point. Uh, it will come back on CIP if it's not funded through ARPA as another capital project. Um, again, as a phased approach, like you said, mm -hmm. on the different sections of roof, yeah. Sure. So probably will come through in one phase or another on CIP for a few years. Yeah. One just, section at a time, basically, right? right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. So are you guys comfortable on waiting on that? We have, it sounds like we have some time. Um, council system upgrades. This one actually did not get funded in CIP a couple years in a row. The logistics of making the AV in this bill in this room work for the public's benefit is getting more and more difficult. Um, that was on full display um, a month or so ago. The mayor and I hosted a group of leadership students and they conducted an exercise that we call mock council meeting where we let them pretend that they're newly elected council members and they govern. Um, they had a presentation from a local business about leadership and that um, representative from that business came in with a thumb drive and wanted to put her PowerPoint up. We couldn't do it. Um, we found out from IT, our equipment in here was too old to accommodate a thumb drive with a PowerPoint on it, which was, I, I would say, moderately embarrassing. Um, so what we ended up having to do was she had to bring up the PowerPoint on her laptop and Cody had to hold a webcam on her laptop to project her materials on the screen back here. Um, which was just, I, I don't know, it just, it's a poor look. Um, not to mention the fact that we have this like wonky voting system where half of us are voting using our cell phone while we're trying to run a meeting packet on a computer or an iPad, like nothing works together. So I feel like we're getting to the point where the rubber has met the road on the technology in this room because it's, 
it's as old as some of us are. So I guess what are your thoughts on moving moving that ahead? Yeah, I've been advocate. I think, you know, for the years I've been on CIP, I've been advocating for this. And it's, I think we're to the point it's sorely needed. I don't know how many times we've sat here prior to meetings um, troubleshooting one issue or another, be it the um, yeah the, the the voting system or the displays or the um, the, the WebEx or mm -hmm. whatnot. You look around the corner and there's a stack there with a with a video cassette player. You know, it's, it's yeah. does anybody have you know VHS tapes with that or, right? You know, so it's um, you know it's 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 past its point and I. I mentioned transparency. It's something that we all kind of harp about is is transparency. And, and one of those things it, on, when it comes to transparency is effectively running a meeting so that the public can partici participate by, by viewing it in an expedient manner. Mm -hmm. And if, and if, if we have somebody brings in a presentation or comes in on WebEx and our public access guy has got to train his camera on that monitor because that's the only way yeah. they can see it or we get somebody call in and we got a microphone sitting next to the you know the teleconference yeah. device no this is that's not these aren't workable solutions anymore this is 2024 you know we we got to we 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 got to we got to fix our own house and i know we we don't want to spend money on ourselves but we're at that point where we have to do something i think that I, I tend to agree with you i mean we've had just a number of failures and i mean even the simple act of you know pulling an item off the agenda and trying to reset the voting in real time on the fly they struggle with that they struggle with three different monitors to run a meeting in here yeah so it's been it's been hard um i guess does someone want to make a motion to move forward the council upgrades a uh, motion from lukens is there a second Second by Watson. Further discussion on the upgrades to this room. Doug. How fresh is this number, this estimate? So we, we're not going to be looking at another 100 to to do something with cameras that we haven't anticipated. I, I mean, yeah, just, this was developed by the IT department, so I don't really know the answer to that. Sorry. We had it in CIP in July, mm -hmm. and I think it was at least this amount. Great. It was this well, amount in July, yeah. Yes. So this is as good as last July. Yeah. Right. So, all right, so with a motion and a second on the floor then to move that project forward, members in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, aye. opposed? None are opposed, that motion carries. Um, the point at which we believed we would run out of funding is tennis court. I mean, that's the point on the list that we're at. We kind of felt like beyond that point, even if we wanted to fund all these things, the stuff at the bottom of the list, we would put a pin in and just hold and wait and see. Um, where are you guys at with that tennis court? Sarah. Um, so does that 135, I know there was talk about a donation for pickleball. I didn't know if that was still on the. the there was, we'll bring um, our park director back up. Court. And, yes, and I, pickleball oh, court, restriping, yeah. dual striping was yeah, what. That, I was just saying, I didn't know if it was still on the court. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have not talked with them um, mm -hmm. since this was deferred. So I don't know if it's still there. I know he was very passionate about making it, but it would be trans it would be making them from tennis courts to pickleball courts and not dual striping, not dual striping. for this okay. is what his request was because we have the tennis court still at Memorial Park Ocean. within that same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, I know he was very passionate about it. I don't. I have not reached out to him because I didn't want to reach out to him and say, could you still do this again and then again have it deferred for another year. So um, mm -hmm. if it is, looks like it will be funded, then I would reach out with him right away and, and let Marianne know if, if it is included or if it's not. And if it's not, then we would be short and figure out how we would accomplish that. So the 135 was contemplating the donation of the 25? The 135 is what I would be asking from the city of ARPA. The total project was about 150. Okay. 160. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and you were saying that based on the condition of that court, it would have to be closed this summer for tennis use yes. based on condition if we don't do anything. Right. Yeah, as of right now, we'll keep the, there's massive cracks in it that could cause trip hazards and it's really unsafe for the public to use. So right now the gates are locked and they'll remain locked until we can figure something else out. Okay. Sarah? And would it, would it be able to be fixed by this summer, you think, or it would be a? No, I think, 
if, if, it if was we could approved. get the contracts out, I mean, it's it's asphalt, so I think it would be something that we could complete this summer. Okay. I'm pretty sure. So it could be usable. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in use for the season. Yep. What do you think, committee? I mean, that was the only other project that we kind of thought that we were on the fence about for tonight. On 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 the the, <coughs> the range and scope of ARPA of ARPA projects that we've looked at over the last three years, I can. There's been maybe one maybe two that are parks exclusive mm -hmm. and i think you know yeah it, it would be nice to see another amenity mm -hmm. that to use this funding for well and our goal always was to try and activate or create spaces for active outdoor lifestyles because that's what people were told to do during the pandemic mm -hmm. was get out where there's fresh air and recreate and you know where you're not all cooped up together inside so um, this really would, I guess, activate that space in a diff different way. And pickleball has taken off with wild popularity in this community. We talked about that in CIP, that there's there's a really a serious enthusiasm for the use there, where not, maybe not as much with tennis. I'd mo I move to move this one forward. Okay. So we have a motion from Watson to move forward the tennis court replacement with the understanding that it would be striped for pickleball. Um, is there a second for that? Second by Martins. Further discussion? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Members opposed? No. Okay, so we'll record one no. Um, so that really brings us kind of to the end of the list. The rest of the stuff is all CIP eligible. Do you want to take any more items from this, or do we want to leave this list and leave the rest of the funding and in, in the coming months between now and August um, consider new requests and these maybe at a later date? I mean, we don't have to really push any of the rest of the list until we get down to the nitty gritty at the end of the summer. We're getting pretty close to the council meeting. I think this we is are. probably a good time to break okay. and um, the, it, it seems yeah. like a natural point. Agree. And we will bring the ARPA monitoring um, worksheet to the next meeting okay. um, just so that we're keeping you abreast of the information and I'll add some investment income information onto that report so that you can track that as well. Sure. So that took care of item 10. Item 11 was the airport items that were incorporated in the list that we've already talked about. Uh, and it sounded like our um, motivation was maybe to leave those wait for now anyway. Um, so then with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion from Denny, second from Martins. Members in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No one's ever opposed. We'll stand adjourned and make way for the council at 6.30. Thank you, everyone.